But let me just ask you this. We've seen then today a Putin who has been, it seems, in Kherson and in Lugansk, second time to these territories. I wonder what, if anything, you make of that. It, it looks like a bit of a show. Is it also, do you imagine, maybe a, a show of insecurity? Well, first, we need to maybe even question, is it really Putin? I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but there were some pretty learned people that said the last visit by, quote, unquote, Putin to Ukraine, it was more than likely a body double. So, mm. um, we, you know, we have to understand that that it is a dangerous place. And Mr. Putin has been showing a lot of timidity about getting out and about for a long time, sitting at the end of 40 foot tables and distancing himself from people, et cetera, et cetera. So yes. if we assume that it is him, uh, he may be out there trying to reinvigorate this very much stalled, if not completely over Russian offensive. Uh, learned colleagues who are watching what has happened in the force uh, on the ground, the Russian force on the ground, are now beginning to talk about the possibility that that Russian offensive has pretty much stalled. The fighting in Bakhmut, of course, continues, but it is one small part of the front and and it doesn't appear to be changing in Russia's favor at any quick clip. Uh, we don't know exactly how well it's going there on the ground. There are battling uh, narratives of what's happening. But, but if Mr. Putin is in country, it's probably because he's trying to reinvigorate a stalled, if not failed, uh, Russian offensive. And it's a fascinating thought, General, the idea that, that Ukraine has weathered the worst Russia could throw at them in this latest offensive. And it, and it leads naturally to thoughts about a Russian, a, a Ukrainian counter-offensive. Everyone is now waiting for that to happen. We hear also that, that Dmitry Medvedev, the former, former Russian prime minister, has been talking about Russia using every weapon at its disposal if the, uh, if the Ukrainians appear to threaten Russian-held Crimea. Now, we've heard that kind of language before. I wonder how seriously you take it, because it sounds pretty dark. Well, we, we would be fools if we didn't, uh, you know, in academic honesty, understand that maybe Medvedev and others are, are speaking the truth. But if we look at what Russia has been doing in this war, uh, it would give one caution about what they're saying. As we have seen, <clears throat> Russia's army has failed it, strategically defeated north of Kiev, strategically defeated north and northwest of Kharkiv, uh, operationally defeated so far in the south around Kherson, mm. and at least, at worst, a stalemate uh, now in Bakhmut. So the army is failing Russia on the ground. But what is working wonderfully for Russia is this war of intimidation, this war of words. The West is nearly completely deterred from taking decisive action really? to help Ukraine to win. And so this war of words is working for it. That's interesting. So on your analysis, what should NATO, Ukraine's allies in Europe and the West and elsewhere, what should they be doing? You suggest that something much more assertive can and should be done. What would that be? Well, we have to first make a policy decision that we want Ukraine to win. I'll only pick on my country when we say that we're going to give them everything it needs, or we say we're going to be there as long as it takes. To a military planner, a military commander, these are completely inadequate and short uh, remarks. They would be better served if they said we're going to be there as long as it takes to, to do what? We will give them everything they need to do what? If we said to win and expel Russia from Ukraine, that would call for a much, much different uh, supply and uh, offerings by the West. We know, as we just said a minute ago, that Ukraine face to face with Russia on the battlefield when they have the kit they need, Ukraine wins. Yes. So if we made the decision now to outfit them correctly, they could expel Russia, certainly from the continental part of Ukraine. Yes. We'll have to have a conversation about Crimea later. And, well, and what are your own thoughts, maybe your own preferences on that? As someone who thinks about these things deeply each day, 
so you would, it seems, you'd like to see a Ukrainian policy to push Russia back to the, the borders before the, uh, the, the, this invasion. Would you also like to see a move on, on Crimea? Well, first of all, let's just reinforce what you said. This is a completely contrived war, completely contrived by Mr. Putin to serve his purposes at reorganizing the security architecture of Eastern Europe. <clears throat> and yes, we should give Ukraine what it needs to push him out of uh, continental Ukraine. And I believe, but this is just now my personal feeling, we should also then begin the move to expel Russia from Crimea. These are both illegal, immoral, inhumane occupations that uh, Russia has taken on and the world should not stand for it. Yeah, it would inevitably, though, would it not? The idea of threatening Crimea, which is of such importance symbolically in reality and militarily to, to Russia, the Black Sea ports and so on, they, they would throw everything they have to, to prevent losing that territory, wouldn't, wouldn't they, General? That's certainly what Mr. Putin wants the world to think, isn't it? Again, his military is failing him, but his war of words are winning. And so when people take the attitude that you just took, he mm -hmm. has won, hasn't he? If we don't ever test him, then he wins. And so far, his war of words, his war of intimidation, his nearly complete deterrence of the West has won. Well, I'm John Pienaar. And if you found that interesting, we are here each day, Monday to Thursday, five o'clock till seven o'clock on Drive. And from seven till eight, Pienaar and Friends, where we discuss the big stories of the day each day on Times Radio.